where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. If you're new here, by the way, to the channel, very nice to meet you and a huge welcome back to all our regular viewers and awesome subscribers because, of course, it's thanks to you that I continuously want to do these kind of videos. So remember to hit the like and subscribe and also bell notification so YouTube tells you when we upload new videos in your video feed. And if you're an HP Reverb G2 owner, this is the go-to place for all your HP Reverb G2 content. You can go and check out all the other videos, which I'll put a link in the description below. Now today, I'm very excited because we're gonna be talking about the Steam Deck, which is released by Valve, and why I personally think this is actually a huge deal for VR generally. Even though we're not a gaming kind of channel, you know, this is a big deal for VR, and this is something that I believe is important to address. So let me just change and transition to the you know other screen. So basically, the Steam Deck, what is it? Well, it's a portable gaming console, but to me, it is not a gaming portable, portable gaming console, okay? It is not. What really differentiates this thing from everything else is the fact that it's actually a mini PC in your hands. That's right. It's one of the world's first, if not the first, I think there might be another one, but I'm not quite sure. So let's just say it's the first, for the sake of saying it's the first, or one of the first, portable PCs in your hand that you can basically then use like a PC. So for example, if I go and show you, um, you know, some, some of the footage that we have, so let me just play it around. By the way, if you're not familiar with who Valve are, first of all, they developed a platform online, which is probably the world's most reputable platform to go and fetch all your favorite PC, VR, and non-PC applications, whether it's gaming or non-gaming. They also developed one of the world's best VR headsets that you could potentially buy on the market today, including Lamborghini, Ferrari, all the biggest brands have this VR headset. So it's a really big deal. And even HP, when they released their HP Reverb D2, which is more powerful than the, you know, uh, it's got better specs than the H than the Valve Index, but they partnered with Valve in order to develop the VR headset. So they have a lot of power inside of the VR ecosystem. And then also, of course, they developed Half-Life Alyx, which really helped to, you know, have all these people who weren't in VR, who were using their PC for gaming or whatever not, to actually transfer into VR thanks to an application that they released uh, not too long ago called Half-Life Alex, and which is deemed today to still be the number one best graphically looking kind of immersive experience in virtual reality. So the reason why this is a huge deal that, um, you know, Valve are releasing this kind of portable device is the fact that you can attach it to a mouse, you can attach it to a keyboard, you can attach a, a, a screen, a PC screen into it. I mean, this is a really, really big deal. And also it's powered by the OS developed by the Lynx platform by Valve, but also you can basically change it to the Windows OS and run it like an OS computer from this thing. So this is a really, really huge deal because you could imagine in the future, um, for example, what they said is it might actually have cloud powered computing on it, which basically means you don't have to install anything or download anything. It will just run straight away from the cloud servers that belong to Valve. And this is really the future. So just imagine in the future, you know, you might have two different markets for the actual, um, you know, for, for the VR industry. One could be the wireless standalone industry because at the moment there's only one brand Actually, there's two brands, one running in China as well, who provide a standalone wireless VR experience. That means you don't need a computer and all these kind of things to run all the very various different games inside of it. One brand is in China, and another one is, of course, the Western brand. And then we also have HTC and Pico, who also provide a wireless standalone experience, but it's not for the consumer, it's for the enterprise market. Now, we also know that in the future, there will be various different brands releasing AR, augmented reality, uh, glasses to, to use that will actually be cordoned to a phone or to some sort of other device to run all the applications. So this basically means that eventually we could have uh, a, a market in VR where basically you have standalone, but then also you might have a very much thinner VR headset or until at least the, the technology catches up and you know we can have standalone VR devices that are super ultra light, we could have 
super ultralight VR devices that run from a cable onto a steam powered portable PC console. I mean, that could be really the future. And also you could continue your applications on the console or continue them on the VR headset. It wouldn't matter because everything will be basically cross uh, compatible from PC to portable to VR to whatever it might be, even your phone. Who knows if it supports cloud computing, then you could also use it on your phone, of course. So I think this is really, really exciting for the world of VR because I can really see people having these kind of boxes or these kind of portable uh, media devices or content devices, you know, being on a train or waiting for a meeting or I don't know, just everywhere and anywhere where you could just plug in your VR device inside of this box. So I think this is really why today I wanted to talk about this um, you know, very briefly, because this is a step forward towards portable VR computing in my mind. In my mind, that's what it is. And this is why we should all be excited, especially as Valve are the first ones to be releasing some kind of device like this, who have their toes dipped in every single pond, um, whether it's software or hardware in the VR and non-VR space, and now portable space. I think this is really gonna position them very strongly as contenders in the future moving forward. So guys, let's just you know talk about you and the comments that you've left on the channel because I really want to thank you and give you guys some shout outs. So let's go to the uh, VR Essentials YouTube channel. We're going to go to the previous video, which is all about why I don't use a wheel uh, and I use, you know, what, why, do I, why I don't use a wheel and why I use an Xbox S controller for my VR sim applications. So let's go to that video very quickly. Let me pause this video there. And I asked you on the video to leave your comments and let us know, you know, what kind of wheel you use or what kind of setup you have uh, to help people uh, in the community, because now we're almost at 8,000 subscribers, you know, who may also be curious about this. So Stephen McLean, thank you very much for your comment. You said, hi, I had a play seat challenge and a G29 by Logitech folds up and away in seconds, zip tied, all cables, just USB and plug. G29 is great entry level wheel and worth every penny. Keep the great video coming. Thank you very much, Stephen McLean. Really appreciate that. Michael Pettersen said, I have a play seat challenge and a G23, which is by Logitech as well, that I use when playing racing simulators in VR. Cheap and super stable. Thank you very much, Michael Pettersen. Really appreciate your, your feedback. Some mental base said, check out We Stand Pro. That's what I use. It falls onto my desk and holds my T300. T3PA Pro and TH8A Shifter. Thank you very much, Submental Base. Really appreciate that. Now, Trashman, I'm not going to read everything. Sorry about that, but I'm going to read some of it. And thank you very much for posting your comment also. Howdy, fella. Yep, totally understand each of their own, as they say. But LOL, if you're into racing cars, then a steering wheel makes a huge difference. I really agree with you. I can't disagree with that. Uh, I've got a G29, like Stephen McLean in the post below. Bought it second hand for £100 on eBay. I've kind of cheated because I had a G27, so I've already got the pedals and the clamp, and I clamp it to a very wobbly dining table while sitting on an old man comfy, mega padded, on wheels computer chair. Well, thank you very much for providing your feedback also, Trash Man. And also thank you to everyone else who left comments on all the various other videos that you can go and check out on the channel as well. So guys, remember to subscribe and also enable the bell notification so YouTube tells you when we upload new videos in the future. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video. See you guys. Take it easy.